What is going on everybody, it's Marco here with Marco's Tech Talk, and today I'm going to be doing a hard drive swap on my HP Omen laptop. Uh, it's been a little bit crowded in that hard drive, it's only one terabyte after all. And uh, yes, yeah, so I just figured I would go ahead and upgrade it to a two terabyte. I went ahead and got the uh, Seagate two terabyte Fire CUDA drive. It's an SSHD, so it's a solid state hard drive hybrid or solid state hybrid drive, something like that it's called. And uh, it's got eight gigabytes, I think, of like SSD in it, it's supposed to help with speed, supposedly. I don't really know, but it was only $15 more than a standard hard drive, so I figured, you know, might as well just get the Fire CUDA instead of the Barracuda. Uh, so yeah, that's what I decided to do. Uh, guys, remember to hit the subscribe button. We're almost at uh, 600 subscribers, so let's go ahead and keep hitting that button there and turn notifications if you don't have them on already. And uh, yeah, guys, without further ado, here's the video. Alright, so I figured that I would firstly show you guys the uh, hard drive itself, the unboxing of the hard drive. And then uh, after that, we'll go ahead and just pop it on into the laptop. So the box is very basic, it's just a cardboard box, and we're just going to go ahead and break the seal right here. Open this up. And then we've got our warranty information, and that's basically all that's going to have in it. And then the hard drive itself. So this is no longer needed. And here's the hard drive. Go ahead and take it out of its little packaging as well. So this is it, the 2 terabyte Fire CUDA, as you can see. So it's going to be your standard SATA drive set up with the SATA cable and power cable. And yeah, other than that, it just looks like a regular uh, standard hard disk drive, a platter drive. It doesn't look any, like anything, like an SSD really, you can still tell it's mechanical. So yeah, I mean, we're going to go ahead and put, pop this thing into the uh, laptop now. Alright, so we're going to get started right here. Last time I did not put anything down to protect the laptop and I regretted it because it does have tiny little scratches on it now. So this time I'm actually going to put down a microfiber cloth to protect it. Not sure if this is the best material to use, but I think it'll be just fine for me and uh, I'm willing to use it as my material. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and place the laptop down. It is powered off and clearly unplugged. So we will go ahead and tear into it right now. Alright, so now that we have the laptop open, I wanted to point out that these two screws that were up here are actually captive screws. They're the ones towards the back of the laptop. So they actually stay in the bottom uh, case there. So you don't have to worry about actually taking those all the way out. Just loosen them all the way and then you pull up and it's off. Alright, so anyway, in order to remove the hard drive, it's not mounted anywhere, but there is this really, really, really short little ribbon cable, which is incredibly annoying to deal with. So I happen to have one of these little tools, these like plastic spudger things that I'm going to use in order to lift up the little lock, the little black lock there, and pull it out, and pull out the cable via this little blue plastic kind of string thing here, this little grabby thing, because there's just not enough slack to be able to pull the drive out. So we'll go ahead and carefully lift that up and out of here. If I can manage to do that, it's kind of hard. Okay, actually, I did it right there. So I lifted the little tab, so it is now out of the way. Now, I should, in theory, be able to just pull this right out now. And that was it. That was really easy. All right, so now the drive should just pop right off, like so. Making sure nothing else is holding it on. All right, and that's that. So the drive is totally free of the laptop now. So now it's a matter of freeing the drive from its little uh, holder here. So we'll go ahead and get on that next. 
Okay, so in order to remove the drive from its holder, well, first we're gonna do is just remove the connector. So we'll just pull that off. Should be pretty straightforward and simple. And that's that, so we'll set that aside. And now these black things on the side, you just kind of pull them off. They just kind of come right off. You just gotta tug on them. So I wanna make sure I keep track of which side was which. So uh, looking at the drive, we want the kind of big parts on the top to be where the connectors are. So this is gonna be my right side. So I'll set that down on the right side. And then I'll pull this one off as well. That'll be my left side. So now this drive is done for, well, I'm gonna be using it in order to transfer the data back over to my new drive. And then it's gonna actually become my PS4's drive since I only have a 500 gig in there. Now we're gonna grab the Fire Cuda. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of reverse the removal of this right here. So same thing, go ahead and just kind of push those in to where they feel nice and snug. So that one's in. And then the same thing, this one. All right, so that's that there. Then we take our little connector and just pop it on into place. All right, so I have that in there. So now it's ready to just be placed right back in the laptop. It does go upside down. So these little tabs kind of go in first on the bottom. Let me show them to you real quick, just so you could see them. These things right here, they go into these little holes that you'll see, and then it just kind of slides down. So be careful to make sure everything is going down nice and gently, and that you're not snagging any kind of wires. And that's that there. So it's there. So now we're just gonna go ahead and slide the little blue ribbon cable back into its little slot hopefully without hurting anything. I hate working with ribbon cables typically because they break so easy. All right, so it looks like I got this back in properly. It appears that way, and it looks like that is the truth, so good. So now we'll go ahead and get this thing back together, and uh, that should be that. All right, so I got some comments from people saying they wanted to see me put it back together when I did the RAM video and I did not show that, so I will do, go ahead and show that this time. So I'm grabbing the original, or the back panel. I'm going to go ahead and set it down on top of the laptop. Making sure that everything looks properly lined up and then you just go ahead and give it some presses to get all the locking tabs back, uh, you know, locked <laughs> again. And so it looks like I got that all done, so now we'll just go ahead and put the screws back in. Starting with the captive ones. So now we'll go ahead and boot it up and make sure that the drive is actually seen by Windows. All right, so after an annoying few minutes of trying to get the drive to show up, I finally got it to happen. So uh, obviously when you're going into this PC and all that stuff, uh, it's not going to be showing up here because uh, it's not formatted or anything like that. You're only going to have your C drive. So what I was trying to do earlier was go to Manage, which I'm going to show you guys right now. You're going to, like normally you're going to go to Manage, and then uh, after that's done loading up, you go to Disk Management. And then you should see your new drive, which I do now, right here. This is it, disk one. I'll zoom in and show you guys. That's it right there. And you'll see it is two terabytes, as denoted by the 1863 gigs. So that's the new drive I just put in. So I'm going to be formatting it. But before, it wasn't actually showing up in disk management, yet it was showing up in device manager as, like, had an, an, an uh, yeah, I can't say it, had an exclamation point on it as if a driver wasn't working properly so I was like kind of at a loss I was thinking about getting Linux on a flash drive real quick and just formatting that drive through Linux and bringing it back to Windows but uh, luckily I didn't have to do that I just restarted the computer in frustration and it worked I went back into management or I'm sorry disk management and there it was so 
Right now it's still not going to show up because we have to actually format it. So we're going to want to choose it, right click it, new simple volume. So now it's going to walk us through it. We're going to want to use the full amount of uh, storage space. Assign, let it, I mean, I'm just going to let it assign drive letter D uh, next. And then I'm going to call it data, which is what it was called before on the old drive. That's what it was just called. So I'm just going to keep that the same. And then leave it NTFS is what I'm going to do and leave this default. And then we're going to just go ahead and hit next with quick format checked. Again, this is all up to you. This stuff is pretty much what you want to do, but I'm just going to do this. Hit next, finish. Now it's going to go ahead and format the drive real quick. Hope it's quick anyway. And that's it. It's done. Finished. So now it is right there in this PC. I click on it and it's accessible now to me. So guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks a lot.